Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the fifth session in the Kusto query language beginner series. This series is intended to take you from a level with minimal technical experience to writing your first queries using the KQL language. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands-on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. In the last session, we discussed KQL syntax and query optimization. In today's session, we'll quickly review the material from the last four sessions, then focus on contains, has, starts with, and ends with to help us filter more efficiently. If you find value in these videos, please hit the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Every five sessions, we do a quick review on topics in the previous four sessions. Each session builds on the last, so if you missed any key topics, this helps identify where to review individual sessions. In the first session of the KQL Beginner Series, we gave a KQL overview and talked about use cases for KQL. We also talked about all the topics we plan to cover in the beginner series. In the second session, we went over database fundamentals so we can have a common understanding of why relational databases are used and basic terminology. We also provided instruction of how to get a free Azure Data Explorer or ADX account so you have your own KQL practice environment at home. In the third session, we started to write our first queries and learned where, take, and how to use pipes. In the fourth session, we covered KQL syntax and how to optimize queries. We also gave a glimpse at more advanced topics we'll be covering both in the beginner and intermediate series. At this point, we also know how to use quotes, double equals, and how to use both the exclamation mark and tilde to help us filter query results. When we use the double equals to filter, it means the exact string inside of the quotes will be searched for. When we're searching for information, sometimes we don't know the exact information in the string. We might only know parts of the information. There could be variations or different spellings of the information or different capitalization. In these cases, we have additional filtering options we can use. Contains works much like the double equals in that it's applied after a where statement and applies to whatever's inside of the following quotes. While double equals has to be an exact match to include the proper capitalization, contains is more flexible. Contains, much like the tilde symbol, is not case sensitive. Contains can have partial strings and still be included in the results. As an example, in this query, we want to find URLs that contain involve anywhere in the string. In this case, we aren't sure what the full domain name is, but we think it has involve somewhere in it. Contains will find all values with involve anywhere in a string within the designated field. It could be at the beginning of the string, at the end of the string, or in the middle of a word. This can be very useful, but should also be used with caution because it's more likely to produce unwanted results. In this example, you can see involvelabs.com is a common URL that contains involve. Also, Contains uses much more processing power to review more information, so it should be used in cases only when needed. More precise options like double equals or the equals plus the tilde symbol are preferred if they will complete the statement and provide the desired output. While double equals is an exact match and contains can include matches embedded in strings, has falls in between both of those options has uses a full string and does not find combinations inside of a string like contains. If you know the full word, has can find it. Also, if there are delimiters in the string, which means ways to separate items in a string using a known set of characters, then has will also work. Just like contains, has is not case sensitive. As an example, if you're looking for users reaching a website using a Firefox browser, you can use has with the word Firefox. If we use the double equals and run the command, nothing returns because there are no records with only Firefox in the user agent field and there are no exact matches. 
when we change it back to has and look at some of the Firefox placements, we see some are followed by a slash. The slash is serving as a delimiter, allowing has to work and not allowing the characters to the right of the slash to be included in the search. The delimiter serves to break up the string. Other delimiter options are commas, colons, quotes, braces, and periods. Has uses more resources than double equals, but less resources than contains. When choosing between double equals, has, and contains, you should choose the most precise option that uses the least amount of resources. We can try to find involve labs using has. You can see that the slash is used as a left side delimiter and the period is serving as the right side delimiter in this case. Lastly, we have starts with and ends with. If we have a string, we can define the characters the string must either start with or end with as a filter. Both of these are also case insensitive, just like has and contains. In this example, we find all the IP addresses starting with 145. In the second example, we find all the URLs ending in home. Contains, has, starts with, and ends with can also be used with the exclamation point to find strings that don't start with contain or have strings or portion of strings within the quotes. Since contains, has, starts with, and ends with are not case sensitive, if you want to use any of the four and make them case sensitive, you can add an underscore CS. Anytime you choose the case sensitive option, it uses less resources and is more efficient. Let's try a practical exercise to help understand how these operators work. First, let's take a sample of 10 records from the security logs database and the outbound browsing table. When we look at which websites users are navigating to, we see some are HTTP and some are HTTPS. Let's write a query that shows only HTTP sites so we can investigate them further. It doesn't make sense to use double equals here because nothing in the URL field will only be HTTP. There will always be something following the HTTP in the string. We could use contains, but it isn't very precise in answering our question since HTTP would be contained in HTTPS and both results would show. If we use starts with, it's slightly more precise than contains, but it'll still display all HTTP and HTTPS URLs since both technically starts with HTTP. So this isn't advised. Of the options we know so far in our training, has will provide the best level of precision. It's possible for a URL to begin with HTTPS and have HTTP later in the URL. As an example, if a blog article is writing on the subject of HTTP, it may be in the title towards the end of the URL. So it isn't the highest level of precision, but it gets us most of the way there with the operators we know. There are more filtering options to help solve this particular problem that we haven't discussed yet and we'll hit on later sessions. The KQL language has hundreds of operators to choose from, but even with the basic knowledge so far, we have about 10 commands that we can work with and we can still get accurate answers back. For this week's homework assignment, use the security logs database and the inbound browsing table to find all iPhone users. That's all for today's session. In the next video in the beginner series, we'll learn how to sort data and how to identify distinct values in a field. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.